This video here is meant to give you an introduction to something called emotional EMF. Now, what EMF stands for, uh, you start to see that when you get into this uh, late magnetism section to the course of your book, is EMF stands for electromotive force, EMF. So it comes from the E here, electromotive and force, EMF. It's not the best name in the world, but what it sort of implies is that electromotive gets electrons or electricity motive or moving, and it's sort of a force that causes that. It's an antiquated term that sticks, but the way we see EMF, you should always just think of it, think of it as good old volts. But instead of giving the symbol V, sometimes it's given the symbol script E like that to stand for electromotive, but really just means battery. But we've got to see where it comes from first. Okay, so it works like this. Suppose you had a magnetic field here, and this could be between the poles of a magnet or from a solenoid or just generate all, any old way you can think of. Just get it going in some direction. And then what you can do with this magnetic field is suppose you took a metal bar. It could be copper or aluminum or steel or something like that. And what you did is just move the bar with a speed V through the magnetic field. Just pick it up and move it. So there's your motion right there, motional, motional EMF. Pick it up and just move it down like that. So what you think about is like, well, what do you know about metal? You know about metal is um, the structure that we've drawn several times throughout this uh, series of videos here, is that the metal is composed of a bunch of ion, sort of positively charged cores that can't move. In the place, the case of copper, they could be the uh, copper ions. And, of course, there's a bunch of electrons in there. Sea of an electron swimming around in there. It's a conductor in there. So here's what happens. You start to drop it through the magnetic field, and when you think about it, what do you have? You have free charges, essentially free charges, which are essentially which are the electrons in the metal that are ready to move, moving in a magnetic field. That should be a, a clue to you right there. So what do you have? You have Qs moving in a B. Now, the system is, is a bit different now. The charges are the electrons in the metal, and they're moving because the whole metal bar, which the charges are in, is moving in a magnetic field. That's how you got the charges to move. So whenever you hear a Q is moving in a B, you know there's got to be a force on Because F is QV cross B. So let's see if we can figure out what direction the charges would move in. All right, so QV cross B. So I'll put the first vector of my wooden model here, the cross product model, straight down, because that's the direction that all the charges are moving. They're moving straight down. And for B, the magnetic field is straight up like this. So there's the magnetic field up. And so this direction here would be the direction of the force. But remember, this assumes that Q is a positive number, like a proton, but it's not the protons that we're concerned with, it's the motion of the electrons. So if a proton or a positively charged object would move to the left in this figure here, given the configuration here that I have, negative charges would move to the right. So what will start to happen then, if that's true, that as the bar, I'll just draw the bar a little bit later in time here, still moving with some speed V. As the bar gets down there, then what happens is all the negative charges move to this side of the bar. And if all the negative charges move to this side of the bar, that means the rest of the bar has a deficiency in negative charges, or you would see sort of a net positive charge over there. That's what's going to happen in, inside this bar. Negatives move one way, and because it's deficient in negatives now on this side, this bar appears to be net positive. Net positive. But you look at it now and go, gee, there sure is a lot of interesting things going on in here, because if we have a separation of charge like this, positive over here and negatives over here, we're going to have an electric field in here, because that's what electric fields do. They go from positive to negative. Again, we're able to get this, this charge separation like that. There's going to be an electric field in there. And so the next thing you might guess then is, well, if you have an electric field in there, that means there can be a current, because it's an electric field inside of a conductor. Now, we don't actually you know, get a current for just a bar that's moving like this, but suppose then that we connect to the bar... Maybe something like a light bulb. That light bulb will glow. You keep moving the bar in the magnetic field, the light bulb is going to come on. In other words, what you're actually doing by moving the bar in the electric field is you're causing a current to flow. You're generating electricity. But let's just dispense with a light bulb for a minute. That's just you know that would just be evidence that you can. But what'll happen here is if the bar has a length L like this, then it'll get electromotive force here. There'll be an EMF in this bar here which can be measured to be VL times B. So that's sort of an equation you can sort of find. It's uh, probably written somewhere in your book or something like that. But the electromotive force will be proportional to the speed at which you move the bar times the length of the bar times the strength of the magnetic field. And remember, this electromotive force is in volts. So in other words, this is kind of a remarkable device then. 
And that's where the word emotional EMF comes from here, or electromotive force. It says, look, you just take a conductor and move it in a magnetic field, you'll get volts. This electromotive force will pop up. So it sort of happened because either the bar is moving, the electrons are moving, whatever the word motive comes from, but you'll get some volts out of the thing. So essentially what you've created here is sort of like a battery. But it's a battery that comes from motion like that. And you'll get some volts on there. So we don't get too upset oftentimes because something has to move like this in a magnetic field to get electricity because where else does this happen? Well, if you think for a minute what a power plant is, and we'll probably discuss this in another, another video as well, there can be all kinds of power plants. There can be nuclear power plants. There can be coal. Let's get these spelled right here. There can be nuclear power plants. There can be coal power plants and that sort of thing, or natural gas types of power plants. But what these power plants do with the different fuels here that you put into them, different fossil fuels in this case here, is they just burn something. So whether you burn the nuclear fuel or the coal, you get something hot right here. And what you do with something hot like that is oftentimes you boil water. So you put a big tank above it like this, and there's some water inside here, and the water starts to boil because it's under this, this hotness created by the nuke, the coal, or the natural gas or something. And what will happen is when water starts to boil and get hot like that, steam is produced. And if you leave a little hole in your water tank right here, the steam can escape just like a tea kettle. So this is hot down here. So the water starts to boil. Now, what can you do with the steam? Well, if you just continue sort of your cleverness here, you can sort of route the steam through a pipe here to a big paddle wheel like that. And what you can do with the paddle wheel is, depending on how you design the thing, is you can, well, you can maybe make the paddle wheel out of a bunch of bars or just, you know, maybe make this one paddle wheel here a big metal bar like that. And then also what you can do next, you can go, well, the paddle wheel is just sitting here. Why don't I put that paddle wheel between the poles of a big magnet like that? So there's a north and a south pole. And of course, if you put the poles between the magnet here, then the paddle wheel itself will be inside of a magnetic field like that. And so what you have going here is you have this bar here, which is in a magnetic field. Now, granted, it's rotating, and that sort of thing, but that's okay. The point is that here, what you have here is you get metal moving in a B field. Metal moving in a B field, and that's exactly analogous to just what we just said is where these EMFs come from here. So yeah, the other one was kind of easy. We just made a bar sort of drop straight down in a magnetic field vertically, very simple here but this may generate a different type of EMF, EMF, maybe larger, maybe smaller, or maybe the equation won't be quite so simple. But you have to agree, if you just put some metal on that paddle wheel, which is going to get pushed by the steam, you have metal moving in a B-field, that's where an EMF comes from here. And this EMF, remember, is volts. That EMF is voltage. This is exactly what a power plant delivers to you, because then what you do is you connect somehow wires to this paddle wheel and send them out like that, and build big towers like this. I don't quite look like this, maybe like this. Towers look like this. Put a house here. And on top of those towers coming from the power plant, put wires like that into the house so we can go inside and we can watch TV. And that's exactly sort of how the system works. But the funny thing about it is what makes that paddle wheel turn to generate, to get this emotional EMF that we need to get voltage. Well, it comes from the steam. The steam comes from the hot water, which comes from burning of the fossil fuel. So as long as you have that fossil fuel to feed into the plant, you can keep the steam going, keep the paddle wheel going, keep the piece of metal moving in a B field, keep the emotional EMF or the volts going, you can have electric power. So that's sort of the idea of where like basically all electricity fossil fuel generated anyway comes from is by constantly moving a metal in a B field. So that's the very important part. This must happen. This must keep happening. You must keep that metal moving in the B field if you want to get the electricity because when the metal stops, the electricity stops. So anyway, that's emotional EMF sort of extrapolated to a rather large societal issue of where does electricity come from.